Okay, right, we should be live. <clears throat> Microphone looks good. Video capture. Okay. Right. So we're back. We are working on the Grim Captain. And if you're starting with part 10, <clears throat> just in case, we are invoking rule zero, which is if your playgroup allows it, you can do it. Because Throne of the Grim Captain is not actually legal as a commander. It's not a legendary creature on the front face, and it's not a Boldle double face card. We can't just cast the Grim Captain. We have to cast the Throne and then activate its ability to transform it into the Grim Captain. So, <clears throat> so we're back. We finished on Scars of Mirrodin last time, so we're on Scourge this time. So. After this, we'll be bouncing over to Scryfall, because we will be doing the Secret Lair series, looking for the handful of unique mono-black cards, and I think there's an artifact or two. I'm not 100% sure. There might not even be a colorless card, <clears throat> Ooh, excuse me, in any of the Secret Lairs that are unique cards to the Secret Lair series. Don't need Arc of Blight. Don't need Blade Wings Thrall. Uh, Cabal Conditioning. Interrogator, no. <clears throat> Excuse me. Just eight, and I thought I was fine, but now that I've started talking, very phlegmy and throat's very agitated right now, so. I call the Grave, no. Carrion Feeder, no. Haunting, Clutch of Undeath, <clears throat> Consumptive Goo. Oh no, that's not the one I'm thinking of. I'm thinking of the one from Muradin where it has the activated abilities of my dead creatures, since I definitely want to put a lot of my cards into the graveyard. There is Decree of Pain. We have Damnation, and we have Toxic Deluge, and I think one other one, question mark? <clears throat> would I want Decree of Pain? Probably not. <clears throat> we don't ramp that hard in this deck because we don't need to. Um, so Decree of Pain not really going to be much of a factor. It's more likely that we would cycle it to kill creatures than it is that we would cast it at that point. And I think um, the other things that we have going on are just better than. <clears throat> uh, I don't need the Temple of the False Gods. A bomb, no. Yep, lots of zombie themed cards because we're in Onslaught Block. Alright, so to Scryfall. <clears throat> So our commander color is black, and our set is secret lair. Yeah. Uh, still not looking for adaptive automaton. <clears throat> All right, give me the right side up, mind flayer text again. Uh, unless you control three or more permanents you don't own, exile the bottom card of each player's library face down. For as long as those cards remain exiled, you may look at them and you may cast permanent spells from among them and you may spend mana so it were mana of any color to cast those spells. <clears throat> yeah, it does not seem relevant at all. Reprints. Uh oh, bone splinters. <clears throat> Pit, carrion feeder. Ality. No. None of these. Dragon's Horde, <clears throat> all the slivers that got reprinted, uh, it's Exquisite Blood, Fatal Push, uh, 
Oh, Field of the Dead. Okay. <clears throat> Menace Ward sacrifice a creature. Gets plus 2, plus 0 for each treasure you control. Whenever one or more players sacrifice one or more creatures, you create a trap, tra tapped treasure token. This ability triggers only once each turn. Eh, not really... Messenger, <clears throat> Golgari Fu, Graf Digger's Cage, Worm Tongue. God, that secret lair was so terrible. Like, even the bonus card wasn't a rare. Crystal Brand, Hero Downfall. <clears throat> Black Hideaway Land, I believe, for those things. Position of Kozilek. Hothafed. What's that came with Phyrexian Carrick? Was there a Phyrexian set? Like, I know there was a Phyrexian language set. I forget if it had Carrick on the... Um, face of it or not. Like, as one of the known cards that you would get if you ordered it. Because <clears throat> I don't remember there being a Phyrexian Carrick, but... Maybe there was... Also don't remember that artwork ob for anything, but... <clears throat> that one's even less... Likely to have gotten my attention, like, a little bit, but not as much as a Phyrexian language Carrick would. Here, Shouldred. Sky Sovereign. Muggler's Copter. Puzzle box, thought not seer. Nope. Okay. <clears throat> thought sees, thought vessel. Artwork Twilight Prophet. Which new ask Mr. Seer. Nope, okay. So, Forge was the only... Oh no, the Mind Flayer also. So, two unique mono black cards on the entire list. 7th edition, Shadowmoor. Alright, let's see if there are actually any playable mono black merfolk, because I think this is my last chance to get one. Like, realistically. I'm pretty sure there's the one that makes an opponent discard when it becomes tapped, but don't know if there are any others. That gains fear, draw a card, plus one, plus one. <clears throat> Seech the Queen. Thorn Scarecrow. Light sickle infestation, cauldron of souls, cinder bones, shaman, rogue. Let's give my black creatures wither, which would be fine for the grim captain, but I don't think I can afford that. I really don't think I can afford any creatures that aren't of the creature types or aren't super, super helpful with, like, stocking my graveyard and whatnot. Pop it. Oh, there's the Hollow Sage. Becomes untapped. Target player discards a card. Also, it's four mana for a 2-2 two -two Merfolk. I thought this thing was a three drop. Uh, that's abysmal.
So I would have to spend four mana on a 2-2, two -two, get it tapped, which we currently have almost no way of doing without attacking with it. Like, that seems to be the only way. And then on my next turn, when it untaps, I may have one of my opponents discard a card. Or me discard a card if I need to put something in the graveyard from my hand, and I don't want to take the long way of putting it into play and getting it killed. That's just abysmal. Okay. <clears throat> Maybe there's another mo That was the one I remembered existing, and I remembered it being slightly less trash than this. So, that's disappointing, but... Lorebound Scarecrow, no. Midnight Banshee. But it still kills some of our changelings and artifact creatures, which I believe most of those are changelings also. Don't think so. Also, I don't need a spirit here. Servant, Plague of Vermin, Looted Bonds, no, Puppeteer Click, Pickle Ripper, Boulder Initiate, Butter Kite, Torture. Yeah, there really aren't any other um, black merfolk, are there? Kind of curious now. Uh, Commander's identity is black. We get the subtypes. Planeswalkers, creature types, or folk. Fire Triton. And I think that's already on our list, isn't it? There are literally three mono black merfolk. Bloodstained Mire. Oh no, we haven't gotten to Theros Beyond Death, so that's where Meyer Triton lives. I mean, it enters the battlefield, it mills two cards. I could have sworn there was at least like one or two other. Got the change. Are there any that we're missing? Have all of those on the list. Ah, I skipped over the Universal Automaton, but... Yeah, no, that is... That is the extent of our options for Mono Black Merfolk. Alright, well... That's disappointing. It's fine. We do have several things that make changelings, so it's not completely hopeless. Also, a few of these will make the deck. The Cairn Wanderer, probably the Outcast, probably the Graveshifter, maybe the other trash ones. Nameless Inversion will get in there, but once we exile it to the Grim Captain, that's it. Like, we only get the one shot with it. <sighs> He's going to be a little harder to flip over than I thought he was going to be. I already thought he was going to be a little bit difficult to get over, but yeah. It's fine. Alright, do I actually want wound, uh, wound Reflection? Because I think I have some of the other Wound Reflection-like cards on the list. So it's possible. Like, we'll get the Blood Letter also when we get to... Lost Caverns of Ixalan, which is apparently THE Lost Caverns of Ixalan. Um... Maybe. So, Shadowmoor. 
Yeah, I thought there were more, like, not a lot more, but I thought there were, like, at least a couple more, um, mono black merfolk. But apparently not. Is Wound Reflection 6? Yeah. Mono black for enchantment. Yeah, Grim Captain's not going to make it easy on me. No more Shadows over Innistrad. Hey, maybe we'll find some more cool vampires at least. Cursed Witch, Alms of the Vein, <clears throat> Asylum Visitor. If that player has no cards in their hand, I draw a card and lose a life. Hmm. Not really intentionally emptying my opponent's hands all that much, so. And I don't intend to be empty-handed with the handful of, like, extra card draw spells. So. Probably not. And if that thing made merfolk or something, or I could choose a creature type. <clears throat> like, something along those lines where I could discard, like, a vampire to the graveyard, or even a pirate, and make, like, a dinosaur or merfolk, that would be super helpful. Uh, Demon-Possessed Witch. Paragraph Colossus. Elusive Tormentor is blue on the other side. It's mist form. Um, I think I need Ever After. These zombies and such. Mana 2 1. That flips into a 3 2 flyer by discarding cards. No. Elgin Aristocrat? Probably not. I mill X cards. Target target player loses two life for each creature card put into my graveyard this way. Maybe. This is Shadows. Innistrad. And this is Liliana's. Indignation. X and a black. Sorcery. I believe. Check that. Yep. Okay. Uh, I don't need Macabre Waltz. Don't really need the Dread Knight. 5 mana 3-3 three, three Flyer. Even one that can get two counters by me, by me discarding cards is probably not worth it. Uh, Bloodsworn has read the activation cost. These things. Sanitarium Skeleton. Shambleback. Auction No. Other target vampire. Um, Youth Collector, Triscodectophobia, Winds of the Mauer State. <clears throat> Abby makes humans. Nope. Are those vampires? Right, we got the Ignatian, yeah, so Shadows, so this would be the Arena set, Shards of Alara, yep, Alara's next. Loading. Uh, you lose life equal to its mana value. Repeat this process any number of times. Probably not on ad nauseum. Archdemon. No. Bane Wasp. 
Corpse Connoisseur, no. I mean, I do appreciate that it is an Entomb probably twice. Lethomancer. I don't think we need the Death Baron. If the Death Baron were a vampire wizard and buffed zombies and skeletons, so that way the Grim Captain would have Death Touch and extra power to go along with his menace and trample, maybe, but I don't really see that being necessary. <clears throat> I said I would consider him when we found him in the M sets, but I don't think we actually need him. Put a minion reflector. This goblet. Can't run that guy. Nor do I think we would want to. Um, Spike gives death touch, and when it deals combat damage, the player loses half their life rounded up. Um, hmm. Like, he's already a giant menacing trample creature. Like, if I could just incidentally give him Death Touch while doing other cool things, but I don't think the spike is where I want to be at. I already need to equip the Grim Captain with, like, his indestructible and haste granting equipment if I can, so. Bane Drinker has red, Viscera Seer, or not Viscera Seer, Viscera Dragger. Okay, so that was shards. Shards. Starter, which again shouldn't have anything. I don't think there were any vampires like unique to starter. I think there were like the black creatures are like a human knight and there's like a land destruction spell and Grim Tutor. I think that's it. All the other things are reprints. Oh, Dak Morgul. He's a human wizard. Or do I want Grim Tutor? Most of the deck is not expensive, so there's a very real chance I can cast a lot of the things I would tutor for, but I also don't think a lot of my things are particularly high impact. We're mostly trying to set up the captain, not necessarily. Although, there are a few things like living death and um, like the things that exile the opponent's creatures rather than letting them go to the graveyard to make sure that they're not getting anything cool back. Yeah, if we need Grim Tutor, I can always go back and add it. I don't think that we do. There's the Land Destruction spell and Wicked Pact. Okay. I think it is something else. Wasn't there a Black Knight creature? Or did I just, like, completely skip over it? Like a really bad uh, chupacabra type thing. I thought there was one in this set, but it doesn't look like it now. Might be thinking of a different thing, like a poor... Oh no, there he is, Dakmore Lancer. I saw the ghoul and I skipped right over him. Hey, anyway, yeah, destroy target non-black creature, but it's a human knight, so... Hey. Anyway. That was starter, so streets. Their gold set when I'm trying to build a mono black thing. Yeah, when you're in the shard color combinations and you get the shards of Alara and Streets of Nuka Pen, it's like, all right, here we go. We're going to get all the cool things. When you're doing like a mono color deck or a wedge, you know, like a cons color combination. It's just like, yeah, there's not going to be a whole lot here. 
I don't need Angel of Suffering, Body Launderer. I think so. Cemetery Tampering. Does let me mill three cards every turn. Maybe? So this is Streets. Alright, I just listed as Nuka Penna. Yeah. This is cemetery tempering it's two and a black for an enchantment okay court official no crooked custodian no cut of the profits bad Yeah, not quite good enough. Mill two cards, then you may return a creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Probably not. Death no. Herder goons, graveyard shift. Cards in my graveyard. So, it's a shipment, no, incriminate, no, maestros, luxier, midnight assassin, three mana, one, two, flying death touch. Yeah. The two different Nighthawks are so much better than that <clears throat> for the same essential casting cost of three mana. It's not really worth considering that one. Assassin new. Rogue. <clears throat> Rogue's Gallery. Sanguine Spy. <clears throat> Excuse me. Three mana menace lifelink, it is a vampire. Sacrifice another creature, surveil one. Beginning of your end step, if there are five or more mana values among cards in your graveyard, you may pay two life to draw a card. I'm definitely interested in self milling. Um it is a vampire. Hmm. Maybe. I think I'll at least consider it. In a black vampire three vampire rogue two. There we go. Warrior <clears throat> Rogue Human Warrior. <clears throat> Whenever I gain life during my turn, put a 1-1 one, one counter on it. Whenever I lose life during my turn, I put a 1-1 one, one counter on it. I can grow that reasonably quickly with some of the things I have in this deck, but not... I don't think it's at its strongest. Yeah, probably not. So that was Streets. Alright. Streets, Alchemy, and Commander. <clears throat> Empire Assassin. So she does meet the thing. Uh, creature opponent controls dies, exile with a hit counter on it, so it stops creatures from going to the opponent's graveyards. Uh, assassins, mercenaries, and rogues you control have death touch, and whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, you may remove a hit counter from a card that player owns in exile if you do draw a card and create two treasures. <clears throat> so, she gives my random rogues 
like vampire rogues and vampire assassins, because pirates aren't really going to be any of those things, dinosaurs aren't, and the merfolk I can run aren't, so... But the changelings will be. Um, so she gives them death touch, and... Gives me a way to draw cards and make treasure, potentially. Yeah, alright. Roll down to Commander, and... Go... Spell her name again. M-A-R-I. The Killing Quill. One black black for a vampire assassin. Two. Hey. Right. Um, all or no. <clears throat> um, rather than its mana cost, if an opponent lost life this turn, draw a card for each creature that died under my control this turn. Probably not. Detective no, lethal scheme. No. I think I need to make an example. Misfortune Teller. Yeah, the fact that Protection Racket doesn't put it in your graveyard makes this card so, so mediocre. I don't need the Misfortune Teller. Exile up to two cards from a single graveyard. If the spell was kicked, exile that player's graveyard. Okay, 2-2 two, two black rogue creature token. Um, don't need the rats. Turn target creature from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped and cipher. Act, currency converter, no. False floor, don't think so. Yep, yeah, I think that does it for this one. Alright, so that was streets. On to Strixhaven. Yeah, probably don't need access tunnel. I was briefly considering it because a lot of our creatures are on the smaller side, but <clears throat> I don't think so. Vampire Warlock enters the battlefield, choose one. I can make a pest, I can draw a card and lose a life, or I can exile a graveyard. Well, all of those seem actually somewhat useful for this deck, so. Strixhaven. This is Callous Blood Mage. Blood Mage is two and a black for a Vampire Warlock. Two one. Don't need Campus Guide. Uh, return target Planeswalker, mana value X or less, remove twice X loyalty counters. No. Deadly Vanity. <clears throat> can't run Embrose, and unfortunately we also can't run Valatane, who is a vampire. Uh, Eye Twitch, no. Flunk, no. Flank, probably not. We already have plenty of ways to exile graveyards at this point. Specimens. Each fanatic. Mage Hunter. Mages, Mage Hunter's Onslaught. No. Necrotic Fumes. Lore Mage is a human warlock, unfortunately, instead of a vampire warlock. Otherwise, we might want that. Bidden. No. Professor Onyx. 
plus one, lose one life, put one of the top three cards into my hand and the other two in my graveyard. At six mana, she's a little bit too much, I think. Just a little bit, like, not super far off. Her witch is a human. A tenored ink caster. Put a 1 1 counter on target creature. Yeah, I'm not really doing a 1 1 counter theme at all. There's Valatane, who would let me exile my opponent's creatures when they would die, so he'd fit the deck perfectly, but. It's green on the other side. So that was Strixhaven. Brings us to Stronghold. That was the last of my soda from lunch, so. Sure, I'll be fine. It's not like I've been hacking and coughing this whole time. All right, so Krovax enters with four counters. At the beginning of my upkeep, I may sacrifice a creature. If I do, he gets another counter. If I don't, he loses a counter. And black to give him flying. No. <clears throat> no, that is nowhere near good enough. Sorry, Krovax. Uh, dungeon Shade, no. I think I want Grave Pact. We do have a few ways to sacrifice creatures, but I think it's actually worth running the Grave Pact here, like that's not really a focus of the deck. The Stronghold... Stronghold's a tiny bit tempting because we get to get back um, like certain creatures that we would actually want to draw if we really need to. I don't think we need it, though, is the issue, so. Also, Volras Laboratory, but I think that's just way too slow. Like, it's cool that it lets us get back, or lets us make merfolk tokens or dinosaur tokens if we need to, but I think it's just a little too underwhelming. <clears throat> don't think I need Ancient Tomb. Oh, Blood Pet, no. Booby Trap, Bottle Gnomes. The Hunter, Carrionet. Often Queen, no. Unfortunately, she's a zombie, not a vampire. Otherwise, I probably would run her still, as I could steal things from my opponent's graveyards. And then uh, they would get exiled if I either untapped her or if she died, so. Vanishing, Dark Ritual, the Dothy. Nope, Death Pits of Wrath, no. Ariel, no. Dregs. The Scream. Enfeeblement. Target player mills two cards. If those two cards share a color, repeat this process. It's a little on the expensive side for what I want to do with it, so. Like, having to spend three mana each turn cycle to mill me is probably not. Like, I get to mill two cards definitely, and then if they happen to both be spells, and neither of them are colorless, I get to mill again. 
I think Whetstone is slightly better. I think that's just three mana, everybody mills two cards. I think that's doing a little bit more for me than this one is, but I could be wrong. So my deck is on the cheap side. There's a very real chance that if we run Jet Medallion, it will make my spells cheap enough to cast two or three spells in a single turn cycle. Whereas I would only be limited to one to two at that point, so. And since most of my spells are black, we don't have a ton of colorless spells in the deck. Probably worth considering. We'll see what it actually looks like. I will add Living Death because we do have enough ways to exile our opponent's stuff. And we're probably going to want to run Bringer of the Last Gift anyway. So having the other Living Deaths in the deck is probably worthwhile. Like this one in Twilight's Call. Also, if we're self-milling and we're exiling opponent's graveyards, we can just randomly win that way. I uh, don't need the Mannequin. Mind Whip. In no... Patchwork Gnomes, Parish. Puppet Strings, Reign of Tears. There's Reanimate, and I probably want that one too. <clears throat> we have most of the cheap reanimation cards, so I probably want to consider Reanimate. Also, we have a reasonable number of like utility or value creatures that are kind of on the cheap side, so entombing one of them and reanimating them wouldn't even be that much life loss either. And if it helps us get like a few extra cards or something, uh, discard a creature card to give it plus two, plus two. Like I want creatures in my graveyard, but I also don't think... Like, this is the thing that's going to help me set up. <clears throat> like, if I draw a vampire I can't reasonably cast, I don't think I'm that excited to discard it to a 5-mana 3-3 three, three flyer. So it can hit for 5 for a turn. Not normally, anyway. So that's Tempest. Um, so that brings us to the Brothers' War. Would I run Gix in this deck? He offers a decent amount of card draw, and I have a lot of evasive threats in the vampires. And he can let me discard them, but for much more value than a lot of the other things can. Uh, yeah, we can't run the Arcane Proxy or the Dragon. I don't need Ashnod. Harvester, no. Primarily because it's not optional to exile a card from a graveyard, so if I have the only cards, then I have to be careful about attacking with it. Also, it's a 2-mana th uh, 3 one, so not exactly a massive threat, nor is it likely to live long enough to do anything super cool. Um, don't need the Locust. Cityscape Leveler, no. Clay Revenant, no. They Corrupt before. Oh, no, it's from Urza, so... Like, even if we want it, we'll grab it from there. I was thinking, because Corrupt is also, like, Shadowmoor, right? Or not Shadow... Shadowmoor? Eventide? I think it's in one of them because of the whole, uh, like, Jaws of Stone, that one. Unless that one was just the, um, discard based on the number of swamps in hand. Or discard cards from the hand based on the number of swamps you control. Uh, Phyrexian Human. It only puts artifact cards in my graveyard, so... Fateful Handoff.
All right, so there's Gix. So whenever a creature deals combat damage to one of my opponents, its controller may pay one life. If they do, they draw a card. And seven mana, discard X cards, exile the top X cards of target opponent's library. I can play lands and cast spells from among the exile cards this way without paying their mana cost. <clears throat> so... Am I at all interested in anything that would let me draw some extra cards, potentially, and gives me a way to discard my cards to the graveyard for value? It's a little bit tempting. Primarily the first ability, but the second ability is not nothing in this deck. Like... Whereas the Vampire was giving it plus two, plus two until end of turn and letting it deal a few, a few extra damage. This is actually stealing spells from the opponents, potentially, and letting me cast them for free, in addition to being a card draw engine for the deck. I can see Gix making the final cut. I can also see him getting, you know, pushed out of the deck just because I don't have room for non-main four creature types, but... Ix, Yogmoth Praetor. One black black. It's a Phyrexian Praetor. Three three. It's a five. Three. Yeah, we'll consider Gix. <clears throat> Don't think he's gonna make it, but maybe. Uh, two one one counters on a creature gains life link. Destroy each creature with power two or less. Up to two creature cards from my graveyard to my hand. Each opponent sacrifices a creature with the highest power among creatures they control. Yeah, probably not. <clears throat> uh, don't need the war plow. Sation, anointer, no. Yeah, I don't think I need Hostile Negotiations. It's a little bit tempting because I get to draw three cards, mill three cards, and lose three life for four mana. So, <clears throat> that one's doing a decent amount for the deck. All right, so here's my last, I think, candidate for exiling opponents' cards from Graveyard, especially Creatures. To make sure that I living death and only get my stuff back pretty consistently. I don't think it's going to make it. I think the other ones are slightly better, but we'll consider it. <clears throat> One in a black, it's a shade. Yeah, two two. Juggernaut, Moment of Defiance, Left Behind, <clears throat> Quandry, Flesh Gorger, New, um, Each opponent loses three creatures. Beginning my upkeep, put target creature card. From a graveyard onto the battlefield under my control, it's a Phyrexian in addition to its other types. <clears throat> so it doesn't lose the creature type, so I can still use them for <clears throat> um, for the Grim Captain. I do put a lot of cards in my graveyard. It's nine mana, though. I think i will be better off with um, <clears throat> the Black Virtue. When we get to Wilds of Eldraine. Like, I think that's more reasonable in the deck than a 9-mana artifact when I'm not ramping that hard. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, Transmogrants, a zombie, so no. Um, don't need the Rager. 
Sentinel new. Uh, I don't think I need Matrix. Also, I think I've got a lot of random 3 twos and 2 threes in the deck, so Matrix isn't even that strong. I don't need the Terrible I think I need the Vigil. Nope, okay. I'm not expecting to need anything from the Brothers War Commander. Or from the Transformers, for that matter. So I think it's just Blitzwing and um, Starscream. Maybe one other one that I'm forgetting. They're <clears throat> mono black. I don't think I need any. So many of these things care about artifacts to begin with, and like I don't need the staff of Titania. Don't need the workshop. Uh, lose X life, create X power stones, and all creatures get minus one minus one until end of turn for each artifact you control. No, uh, fear. Each artifact creature in your graveyard has encore. Not really doing much. Okay, tap power stone for each non land card in that player's graveyard that was put there from the battlefield this turn. Exodus. So they're relevant creature types, and they don't really. Like, I don't have any artifact synergies going on. Yeah, didn't think so, but. Double check the transformers, make sure I don't need any of them. Yeah, it's literally these two. Um <clears throat> so beginning of your end step, target opponent loses life equal to the life that player lost this turn. No life was lost this way, it flips over into a three five um that can either be flying or indestructible uh deals combat damage to a player flip it back over or creatures deal combat damage to you flip him over and he's flying menace and haste deals combat damage to a player if there is no monarch that player becomes the monarch whenever you become the monarch flip him back over all right <clears throat> Don't think we need either of those. Like Blitzwing is another um whatchamacallit? Um Wound Reflection, but it's not a relevant creature type. And every time I don't damage an opponent on my turn, I have to go through all the trouble to flip him back into himself in order to get the extra damage at the end of that turn, so don't think so. Okay. Right. That brings us to the dark, and we're just about the hour mark, so I might keep going, but I'm definitely going to take a pause and get some water in between this. So we'll do the dark first, though. Um, ashes to ashes. Like, it's not terrible in mono black since I get to exile two creatures, but being a sorcery does diminish it a little bit and we have some other very strong removal like targeted removal on the list so probably not <clears throat> Frankenstein's monster grave robber marsh gas aimless race ragman nope safe haven scarecrow
calendar. The Fallen is a zombie. Ah, I didn't know the Fallen could deal damage to planeswalkers that had damaged already. I didn't know they gave it that functionality. Or I had forgotten it. I don't remember seeing that before. Yeah, okay, so we don't need any cards from the dark. All right, so that will do it for this section. Um, if you're watching this live, give me a few minutes and I'll be back. But if you're watching this on YouTube, thank you for watching, and I will see you next time. Have a good rest of your day.